Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Here we are, folks. Huh? In here looking at Mike's car, he did a manual conversion and an engine rebuild. Did you build this engine up or has it got stronger rods and pistons, all that stuff on it? 30 over Wiseco forged pistons, H-beam rods, coil on piston. And it still has a conical exhaust flange? What yes. size is the turbo? It's a stock turbo, but it's been bored out to 19T with a billet wheel. Man, you got to get that exhaust at least a three inch downpipe. Angle flange would be better. You need at least a straight flange. Either today or tomorrow, I'm going to buy the uh, Kinagawa 22T. But I've been waiting on all these parts from Calvin. That's a straight flange too, though. I'm going to see if they'll take it back and give me an angle flange. That don't look like a straight flange. That looks like a dang, looks like it's been shrunk down to a conical. Conical is what I meant. Okay. Yeah, man. I, I never seen nobody do that before. Came from IPD. A conical flange on a three inch downpipe. Yeah, you could probably sell that. There's a lot of people that still got these 15 G's with conical flange. I'm surprised though. All right. So where we at? What are we going to do first? What clamp or bracket you said you were looking for? For the fuel lines right here to hold them oh. together. Okay. Right here. Well, no, there's one down the back yep. and the whole bracket's missing back there. Yeah, I've got it somewhere. I just need to find it. That's what I've been doing, looking for all that. Stuff. Okay. Um, I guess we could do the... All right. Do you use these jersey gloves at all? What do you mean jersey it's, gloves? It's like cloth it's, gloves? Yeah. I have in the past. Well, if you want these, you're welcome to them. They don't really? fit my hands. Are they large? They're, they're too small? They're, they're way too small for me. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right, let's see if we can get this heater core going. We got the heater core out. Man, that thing did not want to unplug from those pipes. These are the old style steel pipes. And he purchased the aluminum pipes over there so we're going to drop this heater core in with the aluminum pipes and the firewall junction firewall junction in heater hoses connected coolant reservoir topped off about to fire this thing up make sure we don't have no leaks do everything, everything clear i think so Clip these and wire. I've got blades and stuff that I can just wire into those. I guess. These sound different? They're really loud. Oh, okay, cool. So the, so the situation where the blower motor is running all the time and these two lights are not working. I'm trying to log into the climate control system with my VST. See if I got any error codes. I think when this happens, there's normally a relay that is bad Let's see what kind of error codes we get oh, communication failure couldn't get that to communicate with the VST and swapped in a spare appears to be working properly key on no fan blowing so we had a speedometer not working which means that this 93 through 95 has the speed sensor that plugs in on the back of the transmission that's the plug for it there that has to be wired to an abs sensor to get your speedometer back 
couple of things going on, nothing detrimental. Back at Ando's place, we're going to do an inner tie rod in. Ando said that video could be improved, and we're going to do a axle on this side, right? Yep. Cool. That's what you're saying. We're going to get a jack stand, jack this thing up, knock this stuff loose, and keep it rolling. First thing you want to do is jack the car up. You got a jacking point here under the door. You probably should take your hubcap loose and break loose your lug nuts first and break loose that CV axle bolt before you jack the car up and put on jack stands. Now that the tires are off and the car is up on jack stands, the next thing we're going to do is break this nut loose right here. We're going to get a crescent wrench, break that nut loose so that we can unscrew this outer tie rod in off of there. We're also going to knock this loose pull that off then we're going to pull this inner tie rod in out of the outer tie rod in then we're going to take the boot off slide the boot off you need this off to slide the boot off to get the clamp there i broke this bolt loose now i got to put a 13 on there and hold it back this nut out a little bit i broke that loose with an 18 on the impact but it's stuck down in there so what you have to do is hit the knuckle right there with a sledgehammer until that pops out we don't have a sledgehammer we do have this hammer though vibration normally will pop it out after a few whacks works better with Two or three pounds left hammer. Wow. Hmm. Sweet. All right. Now we're going to turn this out. You said you got a 13 or it's in the box? Yeah, right here. It's got to open in. Oh. In. Here. What's that right there? It's 14. I'm down here. Oh. It's got a 12. Open it. 9, 8, 9, 16. So you put a 13 on the inner tie rod in thread and then you turn this off and count the turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12 and a half. That's probably what you need to turn the new one in when you go to install that stuff. Next, we're gonna take this boot off. So we gotta see what kind of tie strap it has on there. It's got a plastic zip tie. So we're gonna cut that zip tie. Then we're gonna turn this nut all the way off of here. And then slide the boot off so we can get the tool on there. So let me get this back on here because that nut is a little tighter than it needs to be because of the rust. Let me pray, spray some PB Blaster on there and turn this nut off of here. All right, I'm just gonna work that all the way off. I just Out of alignment. Yeah, the massage lady said it. Gosh, dang. Why is this thing so jacked uh. down? Oh, there it goes. Pulled that clip off. Set it right there on, on the ground. Now we got to reach in the inner side of that and cut that zip tie off of there so we can pull this boot off. It doesn't look torn, so we'll reuse it. Cut that zip tie off. Now we can slide this boot off of this inner tie rod in. 
There it is. Now we have to put the pipe wrench on this and turn this out so that we can get this inner tie rod in off of the end of the rack. If you turn the steering wheel left, it'll come out far enough for you to be able to reach it. And as you can see, the steering rack's leaking a little bit, which is not a good sign. But we're gonna turn the steering wheel left, get this to pivot out a little bit for us, so it'll be easier for us to reach it with the pipe wrench. Now, as you can see, it came out a little bit for us to get this pipe wrench on here. The bigger the pipe wrench, the better. Shoot, this pipe wrench may not be big enough. Are you filming it? Yeah, I can't get my right. oh my finger in front. Of me. Broke it I loose. Missed it. <laughs> I missed it. I'm sorry. I just turned it counterclockwise. Now it's out. And that's how loose that thing is. Wow. You can hear it going in and out. So we're gonna grab the new one and turn it in there and tighten it up with the pipe wrench. This new one, the TRW replacement, has a place where you can put a wrench on it, actually, instead of putting a pipe wrench on there. So, that's the difference. Thread holes should be the same. I don't know if this was an original one or an aftermarket one. Probably was original. Turn this thing in here and tighten it up. What size wrench? You can use a pipe wrench to tighten it up, or you can use an adjustable jaw to tighten it up. <laughs> it's tight right there. And I don't know if it would pay to put thread locker on there or not, but usually you get them so tight that you don't need thread locker. <sighs> tighten that thing on good and tight. You don't want it coming loose. Yeah, uh, tight as you can turn. Next, you want to slide the boot over there and get a zip tie and zip tie the boot on. Try not to forget to put the boot on. Do 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 do. This is how I gauge if a tie rod in is good. See that? That thing takes effort to move it around. It holds itself. So I got the clip on there. Got the zip tie in there. I got the nut on here. Now I'm going to turn the outer tie rod in. In on here. 12 and a half turns. So I tighten that nut on that tie rod in so that it don't swivel around then I put it in the knuckle and tighten that bolt down real tight and that's it take it to get a wheel alignment then we put the axle on the wheel on gonna jack it up get the jack stand from under it lower it down and torque these three torque this axle nut and these lug nuts folks we are all done ready to go for a test drive we had the rent socket set because I couldn't find mine and after we got everything done I found mine anyway we're going to take that back get our credit back and those are going to take this thing for a test drive and we're going to be all done and he got that seat out of that car down there man that's nice if you feel that this information was useful please like it and share it with your social media friends you can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post you can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.